Hello, I'm Gerald, the CEO of Steambow, and today we want to talk about our new flagship, the M10 crossbow. The question is, what is an M10? For us, the M10 is if you combine our new M10 upper, which is basically everything above the line of the, of the, of the rail, um, with one of our lowers, which is the lower part of our crossbow. <coughs> so if you take this M10 upper, mount it to one of our uh, AR series lowers, you converted uh, your crossbow into an M10 crossbow. We have different options of lowers available. The AR6 here fully kitted out with our knife, red dot sight, uh, inbuilt red laser unit, a tactical flashlight um, in the polymer version, AR6 polymer magazine, and then of course we also have a metal magazine, um, anodized aluminum, also AR6 style, meaning you have six arrows, one on top of, it, of each other, um, single stack, 100% reliable, the AR6. And the M10, now, um, the M10 upper has all the advantages that we uh, designed over the last couple of, of months, and everything is engineered into this upper portion. So the M10 upper has the AR15 uh, take down pin for quick uh, change of the limbs and for quick maintenance. Uh, you will have the um, rear sides exchangeable, you have quick, di di um, quick disconnect um, sling um, mounting points. Um, here you have the manual safety inside of the M10 upper. Um, you have of course the, the, the detachable box magazines, each of them holding um, 10 arrows. They fit into AR-15 uh, magazine pouches. And last but not least, you have this front unit, which you can take off and on, uh, where you can <coughs> mount the red dot side a little bit lower or have different options available for this front unit. So the M10 upper has all the advantages. And basically, it's, it's, it's irrelevant whether you um, put that onto our oldest Stinger 1 model or to our newest Stinger 2 variant. Speaking of variants, basically, regarding the lower, you have two choices. Either you already have a Stinger, then it's easy, just take off the AR6 magazine and put on the M10 upper, or you need a new one, and then you have two choices. At the moment, we have our conventional AR6 Stinger, like that we're selling now for two years. Um, awesome crossbow, super reliable, um, closed frame, normal trigger, that is what you get if you buy our standard closed frame AR6 Stinger 2. And then we have <coughs> new for this fall um, the AR6 in the, in, the, in the open frame variant, so to speak. Eh? Here you get everything that we have mounted on this um, lower here. So you have the tuning trigger, um, which you only need if you have a higher draw weight of 90 and more. Um, and then, of course, you have an open frame, which allows you to take off and put in um, the limbs. Yeah? This limb block is sold separately and is mounted on each limb. And if you have an opening on the frame, you can put in this limb. If you don't have this opening, then the limb is just installed um, permanently. Is this a big disadvantage? I would say that depends on your application. If you're mainly using that at home, if you're using it mainly with the same draw weight, um, for example, for training, for home defense, for whatever you have this crossbow, then it makes no difference. You will have it on your wall, um, it will be ready to use, and it makes no difference for you if this is quick, de um, detachable or not. <coughs> on the other hand, um, can you expect more performance out of it? No, unfortunately not. Um, we found out that the closed and the open frames are basically the same accuracy um, and of course the same reliability. There are some rumors on the market that our new system has some, some problems, but those arise only if you use the wrong blocks. Yeah? If, you, if the block is not uh, pushed far enough down, then you can have accuracy problems, but they are huge, you will see it immediately. Um, and if it is proper installed, if you have the right, uh, the right hardware, there is no accuracy difference. Yeah? So basically, at the moment you have the choice, closed frame, much more affordable, open frame, quicker if you want to exchange the limbs, otherwise no big difference. If I now have this closed frame, exchanging the string is still very, very simple. All I have to do is take the string edge, put it onto the limbs. There's a special groove on the end caps. I place it firmly at my chest. One 
firm pull. And that's it. That was the whole situation. We we'll just take off the limb caps. And it is done. And if you now want to take out the limbs, all I have to do is take the right key. So for those of you that don't know, you are here at the moment in our workshop. That's our research and development lab, so to speak, where we make all our product developments, all our fun work is happening here. We also have a whole office for all the boring stuff like accounting and um, yeah, all the number stuff. So some videos will be made in our new studio and some videos, especially the, the more interesting one, will be here in our research and development lab. So I've not taken out the limp and if I want to have that quicker in the future, I can exchange the set screw. Which is supplied with the crossbow <coughs> with our thumb screw. Yeah, that's coming from the survivor. In the survival, it's used to mount the limb, but you can, of course, also use it in the AR6. You know? So you have it now in. And when I'm using that, all I have to do is put in the limbs. And that's it. I've installed the limbs. Huh? Getting everything back on is also very easy. So if you make that properly at home, at your table, and not while you're filmed, everything is even easier. And then just put tension into it, and that's it. That's the whole procedure. Yeah, but if you find that annoying, there is even a better way. You can later on decide if you want a closed frame, convert it into an open frame, you just do it. Yeah? All you have to do is basically open the frame here in the top. Yeah, I have marked this here, here with white color. So you need to make one cut right here. Yeah, here where, where the opening starts. And the second cut here in the front. It's not very important that you do it very precisely. It's very important that you have this area free of any, of any burst. You do that in the end with a file. And it's very important that you lower this front portion so much that the arrow doesn't touch it anymore. Yeah? I'll show you how, how, how that is done. We have here one of those frames. I like to use a white marker. <coughs> then I just take a ruler. Don't need to be very scientific. Just make one marking. This is where we'll make the first cut. <coughs> I have a vise. If you don't have a vise, you can of course just hold it in your hand on the table, but having it stable is of course easier. And then all I have to do is make this first cut. Go slow. The material is very stiff. It's not, not soft plastic, but it feels like, like a stiff material, a little bit like glass. And that's no coincidence because it's almost 50% glass. It's a combination of nylon polymers and glass fibers and glass beds. So small spheres. So that, that was the first cut. Exactly where I need it. And the second cut should then be somewhere in the front. Yeah, the more uh, precise you make the cut, the less work you have with the file. 
Huh? That's that. Work slow. So, basically, that was the whole operation. If I now check if it already fits, it does. Yeah, and all I have now to do is lower this front portion. Yeah, if I put an arrow here, nothing should touch the arrow here in the front. Yeah. Here, the area at the moment is touching the side rails. This shouldn't be. Yeah. You need to work that down so much that nothing here in the front touches the arrow anymore. You have now two options. Either you file here this way. Yeah, with with a file that has a, a round curve. Yeah, as long until you are down far enough that the arrow does not touch it anymore or if you want to work a little bit more efficient you can work sideways just filing it down until uh, this front portion is, is, is gone yeah, you have to take care here if you look from the side here, here there is material in the, in the top don't file it down so much that you come into this hole yeah? you need to leave here at least one and a half millimeters of material so that you don't weaken it um, if you look here below how much here is the same distance should be used in the top then you have enough um, material left not to compromise the strength and then last, last but not least if you look closely you can see that the polymer is going up here what you want to do is also file that flat so with the file, I just go sideways and file it down until this front portion here is completely flat. This is necessary so that you can rotate the magazine upward, uh, uh, upward as much as you want. I would say this procedure is very easy to do. You don't need any special tools. Uh, what I now used was a hacksaw, which should be readily available. Um, a file is awesome because then you can uh, make really nice um, finishing work. But if you don't want to use a file, you can of course also use sanding paper. I have here some sanding blocks. Um, you can use a knife for, for nice edges of, 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 the, of the rail. And we bought here some smaller files uh, from the local hardware store. So you don't need a, a lot of, of, of tools and especially you don't need any special tools. So typical household tools are enough to make this converse, uh, conversion. And if you at any point, yeah, make a big mistake and for some reason you destroy your basic body. Reach out to a customer service, um, we will not um, forsaken you, we will help you, that's, that's no question, but I'm pretty sure that everyone um, will be able to easily convert that into an open frame if necessary. And as there is a huge price difference at the moment, it might also be very attractive to do so. Um, I would say you have now a complete overview of, the, of how our upper and, and lower system works. Um, we showed you how to convert our closed frame lower into an open frame, quick um, takedown frame. Yeah, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our customer service. Uh, please subscribe here to this channel if you want uh, the newest updates and, and news about our products and company. And I wish you much fun with the products. Safety and yeah, have a good day. Goodbye.